Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabriel with another fan TV. Back at you, another video at the content of this video. Go ahead and smash that like button at the content of this channel. Go ahead and subscribe, man. Look. Um, so with the Ravens end of the season press conference happening tomorrow, I thought that today, the day before that press conference, would be a perfect day to say, uh, let's do the Ravens season wrap up. Let's look at stats. Let's talk about the offense, defense, likes, dislikes, own culture staff as well. And um, yeah, let's let's close the book on this season, right? I mean, let's let's, let's wrap it up right, okay? Um, so I think the theme for this season is a season of missed opportunities and blown leads, right? That, that has to be said. You know, the Ravens had seven regular season losses. Uh, five of them, um, the leads were blown. You know, Miami, Buffalo, Giants, Jacksonville, and Pittsburgh at home, right? Um, so that's the theme of the season. You know, blown leads, missed opportunities, missed chances. The Ravens, I felt, only played two games where they deserved to really lose that football game. Now, you deserve to lose any game that you got the L in, the, in, in that column. But I'm talking about just purely being outplayed the entire game. Um... That Browns game in Cleveland and the Bengals last game of the season when, you know, they, they rested a lot of guys on the offense and stuff like that. So those two games was like, wow, yeah, those those are losses. But the other other losses the Ravens had were due to a lot of self-inflicted wounds, uh, bad bad plays, and uh, some bad coaching as well, obviously, okay? Um, but look, let's, let's get into the offense and defense. Let's talk about stats and numbers and things like that for this season, okay? So for the offense, man. Uh, points per game, 20.6, 19th in the NFL. Passing yards per game, 28th at with 180 yards a game. Rushing yards, 160 a game, so that's second in the NFL, so obviously very high in the rushing yards. Total yards per game, 339 for 16th, middle of the pack. That's due to the low passing yards. Got to be honest. Uh, now, this is the big one right here. Red zone efficiency. This means touchdowns when they got into the red zone. 45.7, all right, 30th in the NFL. That's where the Ravens finished the red zone of 50, 30th, and we saw it um, on display fully in the playoffs, right? Okay. Uh, their pass-run ratio, how I many, you know, percentage of run pass. So they passed 49% of the time, ran to 51% of the time, okay? Uh, the 49% passing is 30th in the NFL as well, all right? So a team that, yes, is a 50-50 split, that, you might think that means balanced offense, but... In today's NFL, the Ravens are way, way behind in, time, in terms of how many opportunities they give the quarterback to throw the football, right? Um, so that's something that obviously hopefully to change next season. Um, now, as far as pro bowlers on offense, Patrick Ricard, fullback, and Mark Andrews, uh, tight end. There was two guys on special teams that made uh, the pro bowl. Devin Duvernay at kick return and Justin Tucker as the kicker, you know, greatest kicker of all time. And two all pros on the off well on the special teams as well for the Ravens. So Justin Tucker at kicker and Nick Moore, the long snapper, was actually in an all pro selection. So that's interesting there. Um, so now, so for likes and dislikes about the offense. So I, I, offense obviously ran the ball really well for most of the year. Um, now obviously there was some times where it felt like the run game couldn't get going, especially early in the season, where it felt like the passing game was 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 way ahead. You know what I mean? That was when Lamar and, and the offense was kind of firing on all cylinders, right? Now, um, I would say the biggest gripe I have with this offense, right? You're a power run team. Your identity is built on running the football. But it seems like a, in, in games where we need to get that, that that crucial first down, whatever it was, we couldn't do it running the ball. Now, obviously, that game, like the Steelers game on the road where everybody knew the Ravens running the football, and they ran it, and they got it done. But, you know, it seemed like it was too many times where uh, the Ravens got stuck in those kind of situations, okay? Um, you know, perfect example is, is the playoff game. Go back to that. The reason Tyler Huntley has to go over the top um, is because they're at the two-yard line in the first two plays they don't get in, you know? Simple as that. So, for a team whose identity is built on that, I would like to see the power run game be more effective, especially down and close, okay? Uh, the passing game, pitiful, uh, be quite honest with you. And if people want to blame the receiver, the lack of receiver play, I'm not going to fault you if that's what you want to do. No issue with that. But I will say this, the receivers aren't put in positions to succeed um, with the Ravens, it's been like that for a long time, but even more so in a great Roman offense. You can look at, you know, if you got all 22 or if you, if you just want to watch all 22 films, you know what I mean? Uh, or Coach Evans, uh, Sip the Tally, things like that. They show you that the Ravens offense lacks space generally in the pass game, right? And now if you want to go out and tell the 49ers who have everybody spaced out and spread out, 
and they're not a you know quote unquote pass heavy team. You know what I mean? They they run the ball. They like to use play action things like that. Things the Ravens could be doing, right? So it's not like it's far fetched. Even the Eagles, right? Um, but when it comes to Greg Roman and passive concepts, they were just bad. You know, flat, flat out bad guys running on top of each other, guys in the same spot. Now uh, that could be down to option routes, guys choosing the wrong routes. But at some point, that cannot be the excuse for three years. At some point, that we have to look at the guy who's calling the plays, right? Um, because if it, if you can't coach these guys, say, like, hey, look, you're choosing the wrong guy, wrong route right here, then that's an issue, right? Um, so that's a major dislike with the offense. You know, um, I thought early in the season I liked the way. Um, you know, Lamar Jackson played, you know, I mean, he was great. Rashad Bateman going down was a big, big miss for the Ravens uh, because, you know, Miami um, and early on in the season, he just looked like a guy that was ready to have a, an explosive year. I will say this about Greg Roman's offense. It is able to support one good wide receiver. He's and that's been pretty much everywhere he's been. You know, that's the reason that Marquise Brown could put up numbers in this offense, even if he wanted um, to put up even more numbers. Right. He wanted to be more involved. He can still put the numbers up because this offense, this kind of offense, can support one wide receiver. Now, two was a stretch. Really, for Greg Roman, that's only really been one time he's really been able to support two wide receivers, and that was in San Francisco. Um, and it really wasn't for that maybe one season where um, Anquan Bowden and uh, Michael Crabtree both had good years. But that's rare for a Greg Roman offense, all right? Don't, no matter where he's been, that's rare for two people to have good years. One wide receiver, sure. But two is not typical for his offense, okay? Um, so yeah, so that's what I would have to say about the offense. You know, they ran the ball, uh, start the games, but close the games, then always feel like it was successful as it needed to be in the past game. Um, for large parts of the season, especially after Rashad Bateman went down, just was flat out not good. Now you say the talent on the offensive uh, side of football is not good as far as the, the weapons and things like that. I'm not going to argue with you about that. Uh, but you got to put these guys in position to succeed. And I just don't feel like that. That's what happened. Right. Um, and you got to put, put playmakers on the field. Like, Isaiah likely had to wait so long for an opportunity. When he was killing it in preseason, we got virtually none of that in the regular season because his snap counts are always pretty much split with Josh Oliver. You know what I mean? Um, and it's just unfortunate, right? So, Isaiah likely was one of your best players, play, best playmakers, uh, potentially best playmakers. And um, his usage just was way, way low. We had to wait for Mark Andrews to get injured for him to get the kind of targets he should get when Mark Andrews was in the game. Those guys should have been the, the spearheads of the offense, and it just didn't work out like that. You know, unfortunate. All right. Now, for the defensive side of the ball, um, well, hold on, Ash, matter of fact, I did want to look at some stats this year. Uh, so, Lamar Jackson led the Ravens in passing with 2,200 yards, uh, 17 touchdowns, 7 interceptions. Uh, the running in the football, Lamar Jackson led the team in rushing, 764 yards, 5, sorry, 3 touchdowns. J.K. Dobbins was second, playing eight games, 520 yards, four touchdowns, 5.7 yards to carry. So pretty much six on the carry with J.K. Dobbins. And as far as receiving, Mark Andrews had 113 targets this year, 73 receptions, 847 yards, five touchdowns, okay? And that's in 15 games played, you know, so you, obviously we know you missed some games this year, okay? Um, second on the team, Demarcus Robinson, man, 75 targets, 48 catches, 458 yards, two touchdowns, okay? Um, Devin Duvernay was third, missing the last three games of the year. 407 yards off of 37 catches, three touchdowns. So that's the Ravens' production on offense, all right? So on defense, let, let's wrap it up on defense, right? Points per game allowed, 18.5. That's third in the NFL, so that's that's great. Uh, rushing yards allowed, 89.8. So you want to say 90 yards a game pretty much, third in the NFL. Ravens were only one of three teams, the whole teams underneath 100 yards a game this season, right? The other two teams were San Francisco and Tennessee, so... Ravens were an elite, elite run defense. Now, passing the ball is where, this, is where the slippage happened. 229 yards a game, which was 24th in the NFL. And I think a lot of that has to do with, you know, games like Miami, and th games like Miami, games like Jacksonville, where they blown leads due to high passing numbers and not be able to get stops. Right? All right, got to be honest with that, okay? Um, total yards allowed, 319, 7th in the NFL. Um, now, this is the big one right here. Takeaways. 25 takeaways this year. That was tied for eighth in the NFL, I believe, with the Vikings and one other team. Okay. Now, that's big because we know the Ravens uh, last year had a big, big issue with not getting enough takeaways. Right. They were way down low um, at the bottom of the league in, with, uh, in, force, in terms of forcing takeaways, forcing turnovers. So, uh, to jump into the top 10 to eighth 
is good. That's good. That's a good start. Uh, guys like Marcus Williams obviously helped out big time with that. All right. Red zone efficiency. So now teams get into the red zone, but they score touchdowns. Teams scored touchdowns 48.2%, which is fourth in the NFL. So the Ravens were a very, very good red zone defense in terms of stopping touchdowns. So that's great. All right. So now pro bowlers on defense. Marlon Humphrey, Roquan Smith. Um, all pro player, Roquan Smith. Uh, to me, that's a that was a miss. Marlon Humphrey should have made one of the all pro teams. He was he was really, really good this season. Um, it's unfortunate that he didn't make one of the all pro teams, to be quite honest with you. Okay. Now, as far as stats for this year, uh, Roquan had 169 tackles. He had 89 tackles here with the Ravens. So that's why I would say a guy like Patrick Queen led the team in tackles for like 117. But Roquan had 169 if you count the Bears in here. All right. Now, um, sacks, man, sacks. Justin Houston had um, nine and a half sacks. Uh, uh, sorry, not Calais Campbell. Um, Justin Matabike had five and a half sacks. Oh, no. Yeah, Calais Campbell had five and a half sacks. And uh, Patrick Queen had five sacks at linebacker. So, at middle linebacker. That's, that's impressive with Patrick Queen. That's one of his best things he does is, is sack the quarterback. You know what I mean? So, he's a great blitzer. Um, interceptions. If I'm not mistaken, I believe Marcus Williams, while only playing 10 games this year, led the team in interceptions. Yeah, he had four. Marlon Humphrey was second with three. All right. Um, and then forced fumbles. Uh, it was actually Calais Campbell with two. And Marcus Peters forced two fumbles this year. So that was the, that was the lead right there. All right. Now, likes for the defense. Obviously, the run defense is a major like. Now, the major dislike for this defense is the fact that they could not get the crucial stop when, it, when the team needed it at the end of the games in the fourth quarter. Um, when Roquan was here and Roquan wasn't here, it didn't matter. The same thing still happened. So that's the main goal to me, the main focus. Obviously, you want to get better at um, in pass coverage, right? You know, they, whether they're able to re-sign Marcus Peters or not, it's going to be a big, big decision coming into this offseason. Um, now they go, they could draft a corner, sign somebody. You know how the Ravens love to invest in cornerbacks. So they will do something there, all right? But the fact of the matter is um, they, they blew too many leads. The defense didn't get that final stop when it needed to happen, right? They forced 25 turnovers this year. That's great. But each of those games where that blow only happened, the defense needed to come up with a stop and they couldn't do it. And that's the simple factor right there. All right. Um, but I like what I saw from the defense as a whole, mainly this season. Uh, hopefully they can build on to it. You know, they got a new leader in the middle uh, with uh, Roquan. So we'll see what that means for a guy like Chuck Clark. You know, Chuck Clark usually calls the plays. Um, now that he's not calling the plays, we'll see what that means for Chuck Clark. See if he comes back. Okay. All right. Now, coaching. Likes and dislikes for coaching. And then we'll get up out of here. Okay. Um, so now for, uh, as far as the offensive coordinator, we already know about Greg Roman, uh, like I said, the press conference tomorrow, we'll see if he comes back tomorrow. I, I, I don't, the rumor is his contract has ran out, so I cannot see Greg Roman being back with his team, but a uh, bigger surprise have happened. You guys will come back to this video and say, Hey man, you were wrong. Greg Roman is back. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, Mike McDonald. Um, I thought Mike McDonald had a really, really rough start to the season, but he did something that no other Ravens coach on this coach staff has done, John Harbaugh or uh, Greg Rowan, and that's make adjustments, right? Now, obviously, he has better players on his side of the football. Ravens invested a lot in the defense, so there are great players on that side of the football. But Mike McDonald has shown times where the Ravens have struggled maybe in the first half, first quarter of a game, and then they've uh, fixed it mid-game, right? That's That's got to be credit to him, you know? You got to give credit to the players, got to give credit to the coaches as well. Mike McDonald called a really, really good uh, games pretty much, I would say, week seven, eight on. He was he was good, all right, and um, that's not that's actually not all down to defensive talent. That's down to coaching as well. So shout out to Mike McDonald. He got better as the season went along. Um, John Harbaugh, I feel like he just didn't do enough, and that may be unfair, but he needed to do more, right? Whether that was uh, being more active as far as the offensive play calling, whether that was getting rid of a coach during the season where it was clear that it wasn't working. Um, I feel like he didn't do enough. And he gave a lot of excuses, whether it was the, the play clock uh, issue that the Ravens constantly had during the season, whether it was guys not getting enough touches and then saying, yeah, you know what, you're right, we need to get that guy involved more. Um, it was all kinds of issues that, that he just constantly ignored to struggle underneath the rug, right? Um, that's not a good coaching job. That's not a good head coaching job, right? Um, but it is what it is. You know, John Harbaugh will be back. Mike McDonald will be back. The big question is the OC. Will he be back? Um, so that's the big question right there, man. So... Um, now the thing, like I said, for this Ravens team was blown leads and missed opportunities. Um, and obviously the big thing that Lou was launched over this offseason, whether or not Lamar Jackson will be back. I see Lamar Jackson coming back. 
whether the Ravens franchise them or not. I know franchise tag is the, it's like the, literally the last thing you want to do because that opens up a whole can of worms and things like that. I want the Ravens just to sign Lamar Jackson outright, but we don't know if that's going to happen, right? Um, so that's that's the Ravens season wrap up, man. Um, good defense for the for the second half of the season. Wish they would have did more time to close the games. Offense ran the ball effectively how we knew they could, and the uh, passes game uh, that's a lot to be desired. Their whole well, obviously, everyone needs to be revamped, right? Rashad Bateman is fine. I would like to see. I would like to see Devin Duvernay back. Uh, maybe Demarcus Robinson is, you know, wide receiver four. But they needed to draft a guy, probably high, and they need to sign a veteran. All right, one of the two or both. Quite honest. Um, so yeah, man, that, that's the Ravens season wrap up, man. Give me your guys' thoughts on what you thought the theme was for this season. Um, some players that surprised you. Some players that was uh, disappointing to you. And we'll talk about it in the comments, man. Uh, it's your boy Gabriel. This is another fan TV. I'm out.